Hello there, Quicksilver Slash here, and today we have GameCon DE again, this time in the Tier 9 American Cruiser, the Baltimore. And obviously this cruiser is a lot older than some of the ones we have in-game now, but she's gotten some fixes along the way, some minor buffs that have helped her out, and she is still a very relevant ship. And, you know, you see a lot of times, I think some of these older ships get shunned. You know, something newer, better has come along, or different play style, and you kind of forget about where things were. And the Baltimore has always done a couple things quite well. One, hunting destroyers. If you get yourself in a position where you can hunt a destroyer down with the radar and her guns, you can do it. She's also a very good AA platform, obviously. And the 203s are very punchy. You just need to find the right situations. And so often that is really the deciding factor in World of Warships, is the difference between a good and a bad game is looking for the good shots rather than just taking the bad ones. The game spreads out enough that if you take a peek around, you can almost always find someone giving you the right aspect on their ship that you're going to be able to do some damage. There's obviously situations where you keep wanting to shoot the same thing to finish it off and remove a set of guns from the enemy team. But when you're trying to pick up a new target or not focus firing something down with your teammates, look for the better shots. Look for the places you can have the most impact with that single volley rather than just shooting at something where, well, it's what you were looking at before. <clears throat> Now, off the bat, you can see GameCon is running HE, and you see this, I'd say, more and more, and part of it is the power that HE can bring. When you light a fire, the ship puts it out right away, you just keep firing HE, you get your next fire, then you just move on to a new target and just let a fire slowly work an enemy ship down. Doesn't require you to be shooting at it, you can work down another target as the first one burns and just watches its health tick away. And that's pretty obviously in my mind what GameCon has in mind here. You just keep shooting this turpits. I think he's looking for that second fire because normally when you get number two, a ship will run its damage control. Or if enough things start shooting at her and working her health down. You can see already that turpits down just about 30,000 hit points. And that is not a small number when you're talking about maybe within a minute of getting engaged. But there is an Oodaloy that needs attention paid to. GameCon swings the guns over, gets rid of her, protecting his division mate, and then it's back to looking for targets. And, yep. It's going to be more HE. Frederick de Grossa, not a great angle. You might get some plunging A P fire that does some damage, but if you can force that damage control, it almost always seems worth it, man. Shot at the turpits, and you can really tell, and I, I am going to smooth it out, but GameCon is always frantically looking around, zooming in and out, figuring out where things are, where land is, so that he doesn't make those kind of common mistakes such as running your ship around broadside on to enemy battleships. And you see people just blindly sail into islands and, you know, with around the 10-15 seconds you get between shells on most cruisers, take a moment look around and see if any other targets have shown up. You know, on a battleship you've got nothing but time between those volleys. And then in a destroyer, just lock onto a target, hold your fire button down, and just use that right hand mouse button to look around. You've got so many shells going out, some are gonna hit. Now, off the bat, this is looking like a rough situation. Pretty much the entire team has come here to Charlie, and you see this happen. The enemy team has gotten into Bravo. Now obviously Gamescon's team has to try to push out. They've got to get that center cap, or really start cutting through some enemy ships. 
And on this map, when you're trying to push out a Charlie, it can be a death trap if you don't do it well as a team. Or poke that hole in the enemy defenses. There's just so many good little islands for ships with torpedoes to sit near B and basically wall off part of the map. Now side on Ibuki definitely presents a decent target and GameCon has switched to AP. You can see those shells lofting just a little too far, about half of them landing behind the target. But the beauty to shooting at things at range that aren't paying attention to you is you get more than one try at it. And when you've got a shot every 10 seconds, just keep taking them. You can see GameCon has the skill to tell him how many ships are aiming at him, so he knows when he needs to be cautious and when he can get away with, you know, showing a little more side or just focusing in on a target. And that is one place that that skill is quite useful. You can see right now, he is Torpedoes, detected, but nobody's aiming his way until right now. Torpedoes, direct front. And Torpedoes to it starboard. gives you a good means of gauging your actions. Now, in this situation, you just look around. Okay, not the Sharn horse who's aiming this way. Probably meant it was the DeGrosa, but before she had a shot, GameCon managed to kind of block himself off with his island and is now in smoke. And with that Scharnhorst spotted, it's time to try to do work. The volley of HE there gets a pair of fires and you can see he's sticking with it. You kind of expect those to go out. He held his fire maybe a little longer than he needed to, hoping the fires would get put out. When they're not, it's straight to AP because now it's time to start putting on some damage. And 6,000 one more volley like that, this Sharnhorst is dead, and that's going to be a good night for her. With one ship down though, it's time to pick a next target, and this Neptune is very enticing. Pretty much showing a broadside right to him. These shells look like they're going to hurt. She disappears, but there is a Citadel. GameCon firing off another volley to the same location just to be sure that that Neptune knows to keep moving and another Citadel. So, another volley. And if that Neptune hasn't moved by this point, they deserve whatever is coming their way. Unfortunately, they had moved or GameCon's aim had fallen a little off. Now, one of the nice things about playing in a division is most of the time you're on comms. And you can see the Missouri has put himself bow in, really slowing up this DeGrosa and Turfets, buying GameCon kind of just time to put damage down. And that often is the role of the battleship. Tank damage, put some big hits out when they can, just give your cruisers time to just cut by cut work those enemy ships down. You can see the buddy in the Oodaloy finishes the DeGrosser off with some torpedoes. Or actually, no, it's guns. I just saw torpedoes in the water and figured that was what it was. And GameCon is having to tuck in. Unfortunately, doesn't do so quick enough. Eats a Citadel there. And, well, there goes half the health. Fortunately, by Tier 9, you do have that repair party. So, he's picking some back up, and just relying on the guns that can clear this island to try to do some damage in return. To now personally, I'm probably coming out to charge this Kiev, and it looks like GameCon is doing the same thing. It's a very high tier destroyer, but it's stuck in an awkward situation, not that close to land, and really going to be a prime opportunity to get rid of a deadly enemy target. First volley, unfortunately, looks like most of the damage is eaten up by the Kiev's gun. And you can see her just grinding into the hull of the turpits. And in a way, I think it's making it harder to shoot at. One of those situations where a dead enemy is really hindering GameCon's ability here. But you can only slow him down so much. 
finally gets a decent shot on back Kiev. One more should do it. Unfortunately, it doesn't, as only two of the shells hit. RNG kind of doing a, I'll show you what you think. Now GameCon, though, is quickly to pop that radar, because you need to know what this Kiev is doing. Is it gonna keep poking back? Well, it launched Torps off, and oh my god. There goes that Ibuki, right? As I look away for Citadels. Here comes another shot on the Kiev. Still just evading kills, but the secondaries from the Missouri getting revenge. And now it's time to work over a Fiji. And this is once again a situation where you've kind of got to tread carefully. Fiji has Hydro, can probably get close enough to activate it, and a bit of a sitting duck in the smoke. So Gamecon starting to move forward, getting closer to this island so that should he need it, he's got that quick out, and then the Fiji momentarily reappears. Just off the secondary fire, he took a guess shot, didn't work out, and now I definitely say it's time to move. He is detected by Hydro 4 ships were aiming at him for a second there, and you can almost guarantee there's torpedoes in the water at this point. Remember just a wide spread, trying to guess where he is in the smoke. So, he gets his button gear, starts moving, and probably just in time, because there's that DeGrosa. It's coming right around astern of him, looking probably for a sitting duck. Meanwhile, at this point, this game is still very close. They're down a ship now. The enemy team's got the points, though. So if they're going to come back from this, they need to work fast. You can see their division mate there getting into the cap. If you're going to lose Charlie, you've got to get Bravo. And perhaps the one major advantage that GameCon and his division has right now is the fact that they're a division, but also they have a destroyer. The ability to get to caps, lay smoke, is gonna more than likely come in very critical as the remainder of this battle works out. You can see the Missouri there ticking through another repair party. She was quite hurt at one point, but has managed to come back. GameCon doing the same, really preparing themselves for a final showdown. There's four enemy ships, they're all pretty close together, but three are destroyers, not destroyers, three are cruisers, and lower tier cruisers for the most part. Going for a skill shot over the mountain, and he hits for 4600 damage. And you can see the Fiji is turning off. In these kind of moments, anything you can do to get ships from the enemy team to kind of break away from a consistent attack is going to help you out. Now with the rune coming around, he obviously has to be a primary target. You can see the breaks have come on. GameCon really does not want to expose this DeGrosa. The Indy presenting a better target becomes the main enemy. Two citadels enough to finish him off. He's probably back to the rune now. Still pretty much sitting side on, which I find curious. A very risky thing to do, getting a little lucky that those shells are not finding a citadel. And at this point, all GameCon can try to do is just bow tank. He's got the rate of fire to hurt, his buddy in the destroyer lays him a smoke screen. Unfortunately, that being a German battleship, it has Hydra, and you can see he calls out that he's going to use the radar. If you're spotted, you gotta make sure you can see where they are. And late game, it's one of the tricky things about smoke, is if it's one or two of you left, if someone doesn't go out to do some uh, spotting work, you're not gonna have anything to shoot at, so the enemy team just gets to close your smoke screen and prepare. Now the rune, still sitting pretty much side on, finally pays a citadel, or a shell finding its way into one of the citadels, and Missouri finishes off the DeGrosser. Another pair of sits there, and he picks up the Kraken and a high caliber, rounding out his medals, 175,000 damage, and now it's just the Fiji, who kind of ran away earlier. And these British ships can put a lot of damage down, but 
they need something to detect. And really at this point, I think the play has to be pressure. You know, four minutes, if you could instantly get both caps, there's probably enough time to get it back. Unfortunately, it takes time to get to those cap points. You can see the Udaloy is going there, but it's really gonna come down to running down this Fiji, and GameCon is in the perfect ship to do it. Baltimore is fast enough at 34 knots, and with the radar, if the Fiji tries a last ditch ink, it can't hide for very long because the radar will cut through that smoke. And you can see how this one's going to end. The Fiji's pretty much sailed itself straight into an island, over-focusing on something, and it's forced the broadside to come about. And here comes death. At least I would have thought at least one Citadel would have come out of that. But of course I spoke, so the game had to show me right. There we go. Enemy cruiser found the proof is always in the pudding, and in this case, 426,000 credits, 7,400 XP. Confederate, Kraken, High Caliber, First Blood, couple of the special event achievements, 192,000 damage with 181 shells, 6 kills, 13 citadels. GameCon pretty much did it all in this, and his division did it all. They really put the team on their back when they were down a huge chunk, stood up against superior numbers, and kept them in the game. Some of it came down to choices by the enemy team. A couple cruisers sailing broadside on, just a mistake, and that's where the Baltimore really takes its toll on you. If you let it get to your side, just like the Des Moines, even battleships, if you can get to the side of them, you can start pumping citadels into them and just watching their health evaporate. And it should come as no surprise that they are one, two, and three. Between them getting every single kill and they really did carry this one together it was a joy to watch when you look at the damage done well it's spread right out as well and good chunks of damage to each one of the killed ships pretty much half the totals on a number of those vessels and then just critical shots on others and that's how you win a game all told, took home 210,000 credits, just shy of 7,400 experience. Wish I could see what the modifiers were, but considering this is a standard account and not a premium, I'm guessing he's running some of those special flags. Thank you very much, GameCon, for sending this in. Your whole division for having an excellent game. I hope everyone enjoyed this. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. As always, I'm Quicksilver Slash. I'll have another one for you all later.